Don't avoid the flavonoids. <laughs> This wasn't black on the tree. It, uh, it under, underwent a oxidation process. So oxidation, so think of an apple. You cut an apple, apple open and you leave it out. Almost immediately it starts to turn brown with the breakdown of the cells as they're exposed to oxygen. Same thing with the tea leaf. It starts to break down and so it's just, it's uh, allowed to, so uh, uh, <clears throat> the withering process is just like as the, it sits in the water evaporates off the leaf is also undergoing an oxidation process. They say black tea traditionally fully, fully oxidized. It, that's not quite exactly true. It's oxidized as much as you can kind of get before it's uh, fully dried. Uh, but that's what turns it black and that's what gives it its uh, unique um, flavor and aromatics. So it can handle a pretty high temperature hit. I rarely put rolling boil water over black tea. Uh, I think it keeps it a little bit softer. Uh, doesn't pull out as much tannins. Tannins are what give you that kind of puckery effect. They're a drying, uh, it's, a, it's a chemical, a chemical, they're um, chemical components called tannins in all tea to various amounts and creates that kind of briskness, um, drying effect. So traditionally, a lot of um, commercial iced tea has a lot of tannins. <laughs> it makes you want to keep drinking more. So it's designed to keep you so you're almost satisfied. <laughs> and um, I don't know, it, in balance, it's great. You know, you want it. It's like in wine, but the tannins in wine and the tannins are tea are very, they're not the same thing. Very, very different. But yeah, that's, that's kind of a bitter, astringent kind of effect. Uh, this is close to the boil though. And uh, I generally do about a three minute steep for black tea, but it, I'll go up to five minutes sometimes to get a really strong brew. Again, just like with green tea, I like to use a good amount of leaf and a little bit short, shorter steep than generally recommended. One way to tell it, especially a good black tea, is the way the light refracts off of the liquor itself. You'll get this just shining. <sighs> and uh, so it's almost fun to drink out of glass because you can just really, it's just this bright and kind of has a, you can see the surface tension. There's just a lot there, you know. I think, uh, I think that what we like in black tea, uh, if, even if we're not really thinking about it, is it's got a kind of, uh, kind of got a uh, slightly earthy, slightly leathery, slightly um, minerally, there's definitely minerality to it. Um, You've got a, uh, it's kind of leathery, coppery. There's a, sometimes a, a good black tea will have a, be like a, a kind of a bourbon-y kind of oak cask kind of. There's just a lot of like, um, kind of a, has a similar components to some kind of like aged uh, uh, whiskeys or aged um, spirits. Uh, I was, yeah. And sometimes a little sweet. You're right, there's kind of a sense of a generalized sweetness that you can't like pin down and say it tastes like uh, honey or it tastes like maple syrup or burnt sugar. It's just this kind of sense of the sweetness is embedded into the, into the leatheriness or the, the oakiness. This one I really like, it's really malty. I, like, I really like a black tea like as a... It just sits, you know, it, uh, sits in the... And also part of it is qualitatively and how it like sits in your throat and stuff like that, you know? Um, just satisfying, like just like warming. Like black tea is really warming. I think that's part of it. The book and the fireplace, you know, it's like a cigar. It's a cigar of tea, you know? It, it really is. It's the, it has a certain kind of solitariness about it, you know? Um, I, when I'm sharing tea, I'm often sharing oolong tea, 
I'm sharing green tea, a little more social kind of thing. There's something about it is like I want to retire into my my chambers with a with a, you know a pot of ancient forest and contemplate the meaning of life. You know.